Hi, I'm Bob Urbasier from Henry Ford Hospital, and I'm here today with Dr. Amir Khaki, the director of the Cardiac Cath Lab at the Detroit Medical Center, and a colleague and co-investigator in the National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative. Uh, he's going to be helping discuss vascular access with large bore access um, and sheath management, as well as um, uh, basics of uh, vascular management in cardiogenic shock patients uh, to help those investigators of the National Cardiogenic Shock Initiative. Amir, thanks for having us. Thank you for having me. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here, part of the team. We're uh, tasked here with speaking on a large board vascular access, uh, and this is really important. Actually, one of the largest barriers to use of the devices is vascular access. So uh, what Bob and I would like to share with you today is uh, the importance and some of our institutional protocols on not only explaining the device, but also how we get access and how we manage occlusive sheets and patients who need prolonged uh, therapy uh, with mechanical circulatory support in the setting of large bore access. Here using this model, we're gonna talk about uh, sheath management. Uh, before you could get uh, to have a conversation about sheath management, management, we should be discussing how to get access. And I think it's very important to use a micropuncture, use fluoroscopic guidance, and ultrasound guidance. It's imperative to have image guidance and large bore access uh, when you're, we're dealing with large bore sheets. Our institution, and, and as well as, uh, as, as Dr. Barber's institution, we uh, use uh, micropuncture technique. We use image guidance with fluoroscopy and or ultrasound. Uh, that assures you uh, that you're not going to have a high stick. It decreases your incidence of not only retroperitoneal hem hematomas, but also the incidence of pseudoaneurysms and uh, other complications. So, Amir, would you be able to show us some of the techniques that you use for management of occlusive sheets with large bore access? Okay, so the first uh, thing that you could do, you could see this patient's already had the sheet peeled away. The sheet is occlusive, and we need to establish flow down the limb. So what, uh, so Bobber has a sheath, a seven French sheath in the contralateral, which was used to do the intervention. And using angiographic guidance and landmarks, uh, likely using the impella because there's not gonna be a lot of dye flow, I put a anti-grade five French sheath in the, uh, the leg with the large bore that's occlusive. And so what you see here now is a uh, five French sheath anti-grade in the same side as a large bore sheath. So now what we're gonna do is this is a male-to-male -male connector. We're gonna hook this male-to-male -male connector to the side arm of our impella, of our uh, five French anti-grade sheath. And then Bobber is going to put the interventional sheath, hook it up to that. And we're gonna open it up. And now what you have here is a uh, external fem fem bypass and the way the blood would flow it would come out of the seven front sheath through the sidearm through the male to male connector down downward to the uh, right lower extremity on the same side as the large bore sheath so that is uh, one way that you could overcome occlusive sheath so amir would you be able to show me how to do a um, ipsilateral fem fem bypass as well yeah so the advantage of the ipsilateral fem fem bypass is that uh, you can all, you basically use the access site of the impella rather than having another contralateral access site and the way that you would do it is you would get integrate access on the impella side and there we, we just a seven front sheet there for demonstration ideally you could use a five or a six and then you could see this patient's already had his sheath peeled away and it's still occlusive so what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up the male-to-male -male connector to the impella sheath and take this impella sheath and we're going to hook it up and Bobber could help me hold this to our anti-grade sheath and now what you have is an ipsilateral fem fem bypass and the way blood would flow it would come out of the side arm of the impella all the way through and down through the tubing on the seven French sheath and down the leg. And this is a, a demonstration of an ipsilateral fem fem bypass, which would permit flow down a uh, limb that was occlusive uh, by the sheath. So Amir, do you mind talking to me and walking me through an internal fem fem bypass as well? Yeah. So the internal, the advantages of an internal fem fem bypass, it's going to help you out in a case where, for whatever reason, that you can't get the anthrograde stick, be it late at night, 
be it the patient's body habitus is prohibitive, such as a morbidly obese patient, uh, you can do an internal fem-fem bypass. The challenge of the internal fem-fem bypass is going to be able to get a wire and a catheter uh, through this uh, right alongside your impella sheath. And in this case, for demonstration, we were able to do that. My recommendation is to use a hydrophilic wire. We use a Glide Advantage. And if you can get the Glide Advantage into the SFA alongside that, that's going to be the challenging part. And then you could use whatever catheter that you want. We use Glide catheters. You could use a sheath, et cetera. And that for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using a four French multi-purpose catheter. And what you see is Bomber has put a seven French sheath retrograde in the contralateral femoral artery and inside of that seven French sheath he's put a multi-purpose catheter uh, alongside the impella and the distal tip of the multi-purpose catheter is in the SFA on the same side as the impella sheath and then Barbara we could show them what we've done as far as connecting the male to male connector you can see the male to male connect connector it's connecting the seven French sheath to the four French multi-purpose and the way the blood will flow will come out of the sidearm of the seven French sheath through the male to male connector inside the multipurpose and the blood will ultimately come out of the distal tip of the multipurpose perfusing the uh, extremity allowing the sheath to stay in longer and the heart hopefully to recover. So this is a really good technique in cases where there's difficulty getting an anti-grade stick. So Mary, I think the most basic um, measure to uh, help with an occlusive sheath is act actually to just peel away the impella sheath. Um, so the way that we usually do it, both at Henry Ford and DMC, is we step on fluoro and make sure the impella position is stable, and we walk the sheath back in the position that it is here right now. Then it's always a two-member job, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold pressure while the sheath is in place uh, under fluor uh, fluoroscopy to make sure that the device doesn't move and you're gonna take two hands and peel that sheath away. It's really important not to be underneath the skin or at the vessel, because clearly we don't wanna have any uh, laceration or injury of the blood vessel. And then as I'm holding pressure, Amir is gonna be holding the catheter in a top position under fluoroscopy. We're gonna make sure that this doesn't move, and then we're gonna reposition or position the repositioning sheath. And when we do that, this is a tapered sheath that goes from a 9 to a 14 French sheath. And um, it's the first step that operators can use uh, in uh, occlusive sheath situations. Amir, can you tell us a little bit about how you manage the access site once a patient does go to the ICU using the techniques we just described? Yeah, so uh, at our, you know, I think some uh, really good basic fundamental principles of managing these patients in the ICU are the following. All these patients should have leg immobilizers and uh, the leg should be stabilized, particularly the, the leg with the large bore sheath in it. If you're using a conduit, the ACT target we target is 200. And we highly recommend vascular exams using Doppler every hour on these patients. And so you guys actually have a novel way of taking these devices out. You bring everybody to the cath lab. Can you explain that a little bit as well? Yeah. So uh, for all large bore access at our institution, we mandate that they're taken to the cath lab for explantation. This gives you a tremendous amount of leverage. We use the uh, dry field technique with up and over balloon with the sheath in place, uh, just in case we have any unforeseen complications such as thrombosis, perforation, flow limiting dissection. It could be readily dealt with in the cath lab and you could assure that the patient has hemostasis without the need for vascular surgery, which would be associated with very high morbidity in these patients who obviously are very sick. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Amir, thanks so much for joining us, and we appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful collaborating uh, with you guys here in Detroit. Thanks. Thank you.